Hey, it's Tim, Pickup Truck Plus SUV Talk, and a couple weeks ago I was driving the Nissan Frontier around. I did a full video on it, and I thought, ah, that's kind of ridiculous, because I have now driven the brand new 2023 Chevy Colorado. Yes, I drove the new one. So my thinking was, why don't you just run a Frontier video when, ha uh -huh. I can talk about both trucks, because that's on my mind. Would I buy one or the other? Would I buy the other of the one? Let's talk about this. So I'm going to go ahead and play the Nissan Frontier review. And then I'm going to throw it on to the build and price. We'll talk about which one I'd buy with the other and kind of some reasons I'd buy one or the other and kind of give you some guys to think about. Give you something to gnaw over. Yeah. All right, let's get a Nissan Frontier video. So let's go ahead and start with what this is and what's new this year. So this is a 2023 Nissan Frontier uh, Pro 4X Crew Cab 4-wheel drive automatic V6. Now, in this case, the starts manufacturer suggested retail price starts at 38720 But as we've known with Nissan, we tend to get lots of packages at the price. So premium paint is $395, which is standard. Most people do premium paint. What's different a little bit for me is they have a pro convenience package, which includes a spray and bed liner, utility track system. We have the 20, 120 volt outlet in the bed, heat outside mirrors, heated steering wheel, heated front seats, uh, the under rail lighting, remote engine start, trailer hitch with wiring harness, intelligent round view monitor, and wireless charging. All the stuff you you kind of want would be $2,100. I mean, that stuff, yeah, people don't want it. I don't need that crap, whatever. But I'm telling you, over the course of ownership, pretty nice to have. Uh, we also have the Pro Premium package in this, where I have the Fender Premium Audio with 10 speakers, which sounds pretty cool, by the way. Leather appointed front and rear seats, auto dimming inside mirror with the Home Link Universal Transfer Receiver, so it's got the garage door buttons below it. And we have the auto tilt and slide sunroof, manual slide, manual. 17 inch beadlock style alloy wheels for $27.90. Uh, the package is a little bit back and forth when I get that one. The technology package, I mean, the speakers are cool and the sunroof is cool, but. It's also $2,700. Uh, technology package for $990 includes lane departure warning, blind spot warning, rear cross traffic alert, rear sonar system, rear automatic braking, high beam assist, intelligent cruise control, and traffic sign recognition. So that package is $990. With destination charges, I have $46,380. This is built in Canton, Mississippi. Fuel economy, 17 city, 22 highway, and 19 combined. And I want to bring that up 19 combined one more time because I think what's interesting is uh, well, this has been the frozen tundra in Nebraska this weekend. Um, I picked this up on Saturday. I came back from Florida. Yeah, talk about a weather shock. <laughs> uh, landed, it was like two degrees, foggy. We had snow moving through. Uh, I-25 heading north out of Denver was like basically one and a half lanes, maybe that getting around snow plows. Terrible driving situations. I get to Cheyenne. I-80's closed. I-25's closed. I've stayed night in Cheyenne because the roads are so bad. I drive the next morning. I'm driving all the way back home. And I bring all this up to say I'm was in, I've been in four high this entire day or two days I've had this vehicle. And I'm still averaging 20.4 miles per gallon in four high. I don't know what's wrong with my eye. Uh, which I think is pretty fantastic um, considering the driving has just been obnoxiously bad this week. Okay, let's talk about what's new with these 2023 Nissan Frontier. And so I have the email from the Nissan PR team. Let's go through this. They have a new Midnight Edition package now available on SV Crew Cab. This basically takes, makes 17 inch black appointed LO wheels and then black everything else. Black outside mirrors, lower front bumper, black, black exterior badging, black interior accents, black headliner. LED, LED fog lights, headlights, and daytime running lights are part of that package as well. The Frontier SV Crew Cab long wheelbase model adds the SV Convenience Package. It's in equipment. This is the heated leather steering wheel, heated front seat, Spray and bed liner, the utility track system, under rail bed lining, and more. The Frontier Pro Pro X, which is a two wheel drive version of this, and the Pro 4X, which is a four wheel drive version of this, adds a wireless Apple CarPlay. While the Pro Premium package also switches from black interior switching to lava red stitching. So those are differences between that and the 2023, 2022 versus 2023 Nissan Frontier. All right, let's go ahead and go outside real fast. It says it's negative eight right now, and uh, this morning it was negative 15 overnight, so I'm gonna go outside real fast. It's a little dirty, I'll show you, I'll tell you about the ex exterior. We'll hop in the inside, I'll tell you about the, the inside, and then let's finish this off with the thoughts on those other vehicles. Okay, here we go. Let's go outside. <laughs> All right. No, I don't wear winter coats in winter time. Plus, I can't do it filming because it creates a lot of noise on camera. Whew. Yeah, it is uh, bitter, bitter cold. So this is the Nissan Frontier 2023. This is the same as 2022 model. They made some big changes here. Now, a lot of people said it looks like a Tacoma, but I guarantee you park these side by side and you can see the differences. Really, it stands out. We have Frontier here as well. 
And this is a nice like tan color. Um, E10 was on the sticker. A little chrome there as well. And look, some red chrome, the red tow hooks. Tow hooks always a big thing. This is the wheels. From the side, you can see a little dirt. I'm sorry again for that. Uh, all the car washes are closed at the moment. Uh, come around the side there, you can see the tail track system. You get the two tie-down cleats right there. A little bitty mirror, or a little bitty window. The Pro 4X badging. Uh, the ice is not part of the truck, FYI. Uh, they have the bumper here, which I don't love this. This happened on the Tacoma and it's on the Tundra. And here's the reason why, is they took away the little step there. So you have to step here instead of there. And I do like the GMC uh, Canyon in Colorado have a little bumper step there. I just think that is just a poor design for a truck. SUV, sure. Now the benefit though with this midsize is it's not so high up to get in. So you can sit on this bed pretty easily. Yeah, there you go. There's a criticism of Tim. You can say, Tim, you dummy, sit in the bed anyways. Um, I do have some little tow hooks here as well. They're a little frozen at the moment. You can see them down there too. I would be nice to have a little bit better tow hook, or not tow hook, but tie down. You know, the ones they bolt on the side, they have a little, they go like this. Maybe a little thing they can think about in the future. Okay, oh, we should check. Oh, dampen tailgate. Dampen tailgate. All right, uh, we have the receiver hitch back there and the Pro 4X badging there. Nissan new logo, that's a little red in the logo. Okay, Whew. okay. Now people always wanna talk about the rear seats of these mid-sized trucks as being able to hold a family. And uh, I can tell you, I've bought trucks over the years and I have a family. And while you do fit, you can fit. I had my kid in here this morning. We took him to school because the buses couldn't start in this cold. Um, you're not doing the car seats back here, especially the forward facing or the rear facing car seats. not going to work. Uh, but you can, I mean, I'm okay. It's not something I'd ride in all the time. I have a little bit of a, it's like a divot here. So my head actually fits a little bit better. But yeah, I don't, I don't know if this is something you'd always take on a road trip or anything. I think for an occasional four person, you could probably make it work around town, heading someplace. But I don't know if I'd use it all the time as a four person vehicle. It's one of the criticisms of that. But there's my leg room. It's, and I'm 5'7. I don't know. I have my boots on today. It could be more like 5'8. Okay. Come over here. Oh, hell. Uh, let's check payload real fast. Payload was 1,070. So you're not hauling a whole lot of people in this vehicle. That's people and cargo in the bed and your pop and your cell phones, all that kind of stuff. I have the red here, which is nice style there, the fender, uh, the spot for the, uh, I, oh, I have a bottle. I have a prop, folks. Yeah, plenty of room for that. Um, little door handle, little chrome door handle here as well. These always feel a little tinsy to me, I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Okay. This is my issue with a lot of mid-sized trucks right here. Bam. This is me sitting in normally. So, it's better than, a little bit better than Tacoma, but... I don't know what's up with that. Yeah. Okay, Whew. let's flip the camera one more time. Sorry for the film working, but my hand like literally froze. <laughs> uh, here's your dash inside, and I have the alert because my tire pressure low because it's negative eight. Um, I can see some controls over here. Weird kind of placement. I have controls for the, uh, for the uh, lights as far as the dimness of the um, gauges. Tow mode, I have some of their safety systems. Cargo lamp, down assist control, traction control, and rear locker down there as well. There's a button there for the rear, uh, for the bed plug. I have controls for the Bluetooth and for the stereo. And I have cruise control there as well. And I have my sticks here. I have a, this is uh, windshield wipers and that's, yeah, lights. This is the big deal. This is the new menu system, the new bigger screen. Um, it actually works pretty decent and uh, it has wireless Apple CarPlay, which you can see. There's my phone. There's my messages. All right, um, we have, an, and again, wireless charging pad with wireless car, Apple CarPlay. It's kind of nice. Just hop in, there you go. Some USB chargers there. I got, nice, I got nice grab handles here I like. I like these grab handles, and I like these um, kind of storage on here too, some buttons and storage. I like this little storage up here too. Like, why is this not a thing in all trucks? I put my sunglasses up here. It's fantastic. They're always right there when I see them. Also put up there too. Look, sunglass holder, sunglass like spot. Why is that such a big thing? I don't understand why it's so complicated. Just give me some a little bit of storage here. I don't understand why automakers can't do that. Heated seats down there, which are of course on. Heated steering wheel is on as well. A couple uh, water holders there. I have some stitching over here. 
that kind of just you're double stitching there and then this is the finishing off of that look with the Pro 4X badging. Okay, there's the exterior and interior of the Nissan Pro 4X. Okay, now let's talk about this Nissan Frontier versus the brand new Chevy Colorado. Again, I drove this a couple weeks ago in California. And so let's start with building price. I think it's pretty interesting. You can really see the differences stand out pretty quickly. So Nissan Frontier, what's nice about this, it comes in different varieties. So you can get a King Cab, which is their extended cab. You get different bed lengths with basically six foot or five foot kind of bed lengths. You can get still a crew cab long bed, which is down here. You can still get the crew cab long bed. If you recall from the videos I've done, the Chevy Colorado, wow, sorry, I had it pulled up earlier. I've been messing around with some stuff. On the Chevy Colorado, the 2023 model, no, I don't know why I can still build a price 2022. That makes no sense to me. Um, comes in crew cab only. So yeah, crew cab only and different ZR2, different off-road packages. So uh, you can't really get much more beyond that in the Colorado. In the Frontier, you get a bunch of different price points too. Uh, 35,000, 35, 30, let's say 33,000 for four wheel drive. So base level S with, with base trim level with four wheel drive, crew cab, $33,000, um, 32,000 for two wheel drive. So a lot of different base, base pricing, 29,990 for a two wheel drive crew cab S model. In the Colorado, you have the one bed choice. And once you go to trims, your prices substantially jump. We have 33,000 work truck. And then we start getting 36, 37, 38, 41, 48, 2. So uh, quickly, the Colorado gets expensive, what my point here. And then we start adding packages, which if you recall from the building price video I did on the Z71, some packages don't always make sense. So let's go ahead and build this Nissan Frontier. I thought, let's go here and look at the SV. Let's take, let's take your, best, your best choice here. You guys love long beds. Why not get a little bit longer bed? Um, I think that's a, kind of a smart idea at times. Depending on your lifestyle, depending on what you need. But if you do a Frontier Crew Cab long bed, 37690 for this. And what's interesting, and I pointed out in the video what's new this year, but I want to point, reinforce it one more time. The Frontier SV Crew Cab long wheelbase model adds the SV convenience package as standard equipment. So standard, you get heated leather steering wheel, heated front seats, a spray and bed liner, utility track system, and then the belt under rail bed lighting. And then the Pro, Pro X and Pro X adds wireless Apple CarPlay. So you get the steering wheel and the heated front seats. And the reason why I bring that up is when you go to the Colorado and say, I'm going to take a Z71 as comparable or because there's S, SV. So you can do an LT or Z71 being comparable, depending how you view the market, depending how you use things. Because again, apples to apples doesn't meet up too much because we have more trim levels available on the Colorado. But if, if you do an LT, so if I do an LT with the um, uh, the, the, the Hupper Tune engine, so I continue to LT. So I go to LT and the up trim level, and I go next to the exterior, I can do white or I can do my favorite blue because I like blue. And we have wheels, but then the, here's your interior, and then we'll get the packages. But I want to stop for a minute because I want to look at interior real fast because I think that makes a big difference. I think exterior wise, they both look about the same. On the interior, I think the Nissan Frontier may get dated pretty fast. Uh, this interior a couple years ago was, was really nice, really refreshed. I mean, definitely better than the prior generation. But when you see this interior versus this interior, it's like night and day difference. And I will tell you that this LT and the Z71, this looks it still looks like a, a Z71 interior to me. Oh, I guess the LT is a little bit, little bit different here, I see. Um, when you do the LT in person and the Z71 in person, look a lot better than these photos online. It's just, it's a good looking interior. But my point here is when you go to the the packages, to get the features for the LT, I'm going to add power adjustable seat, lumbar remote start, dimming mirror, heated mirror while it's charging, heated driver and front passenger seats, and then the engine, and then the I guess spare tires. I mean, my goodness, all these stuff I have to add. So... See dealer for pricing, which is kind of ridiculous. Um, so they must be changing the pricing because before that was about fourteen hundred dollars. Well, actually, that was about nine ninety five, and then this LT convenience package was twelve seventy. So convenience package three: heated outdoor power mirrors, the driver's seat back map pocket, the center rear center armrest, just a ton of weird kind of extra features and packages that you may not want. But the one hundred twenty volt box mounted power outlet, that's pretty handy. They come standard in Frontier. Heated heated steering wheel. 
comes standard in Frontier. The 220 volt power outlet. Oh, that's Don Relief. Uh, LED projector headlights. You can add that. And look, look at my convenience package pricing. I'm adding three thousand dollars for LED headlights. Now, the Frontier does not come in head LED headlights until you get the Pro 4X or Pro X versions. But yes, so there is a very interesting LED challenge. So if I add all this stuff, my price was look at this. I added that and that and that. So three thousand. I added twelve hundred. Um, it added all the packages. So what did I say the price started with? <laughs> you took it, took it down. So we'll, we'll, we'll remove and we'll remove. Yeah, select, remove all. We'll remove and start to get our base price again. There we go. 38075 plus 3,000, 41,000 plus a couple other things. So at 43, 44, 45, the Frontier packages. I can add a technology package, which includes... Uh, Cruise control, automatic rear braking, high beam assist. Okay, so I add that, I'm at 39, 975. So I'm still quite a bit cheaper than the Colorado. So if you were to look at this like real quickly, Frontier, I get more cab configurations, more bed lengths, I get a cheaper price point, and I get a naturally aspirated 3.8 liter engine, right? So naturally aspirated, people tend to really think that turbocharged engines have problems. And so if you're one of those people, here, naturally aspirated V6 engine. The Colorado, I have the 2.7 that's been proven in Silverado, but people, the turbos are a little interesting. So that's a turbocharged engine. It's more than just a four banger. They could add, make it a six banger, eight banger, whatever. They don't, as toward, as we talked to engineer, if you watch that video, I'll link to that above somewhere over here. Yeah, that way. Um, so talk to him. He's like, we can add more cylinders. It doesn't give me any more performance. So it's a inline four cylinder, but it's a turbocharged engine. They basically built the engine around the turbo. So you have better torque curve with the, the turbo. You have better performance off the line. It's a bit faster, and you should have some better fuel economy than you will. The Frontier at times, because I've always found that turbocharged engines are very susceptible to speed, to weather, to climate, versus natural aspirated engines don't seem like they get bothered as much with wind and sunshine and snow and that kind of stuff. So it seems like they're more consistent on their numbers. That's my opinion. Put your, put your opinions down below. But I think... Cheaper and also more reliable, the Nissan Frontier historically, as you saw with the mid-sized truck reliability video I did, tends to be more uh, that way. That's going to be up there. <laughs> tends to be more reliable than the Chevy Colorado historically. So better reliability, natural spread engine, more choices and cheaper being Nissan Frontier. Colorado is more, more, more modern, but more performance in the engine, um, more coolness. I think the interior looks, so, looks really well. But it's a bit more expensive. So interesting choices. What's going on there? What do you guys think? Put your comments down below. I'll be curious to get your thoughts. Also check out videos over here. Website down below. Pickuptrucktalk.com. As always, thanks for watching. I will see you down the road.